A few months ago, a daughter purchased a Peloton bike for me. Peloton has a number of instructors and a number of different formats of courses and, and activities you can do, but one of the bike instructors said something that resonated with me. Because as you're biking, they tell you about different speeds you could be going at, different resistance levels that they think you should go at to maximize the opportunities of the bike exercise or the particular class you're taking. But this instructor said, I make suggestions, you make decisions. That really set well with me, that idea of no one is necessarily the authority that says this is the way it has to be. Because part of my experience has been one of having issues with authority figures if authority is the key to what they're doing because they're somehow in charge. Well, in this retrospective of 40 years of being involved with pastoral ministry, one of the things that I learned and one of the things that has been referred to either in past videos or in my written blog of which there will be uh, that address for my written blog back on the wall behind me here. But one of the things that I was told in seminary in my training, especially by the liturgy professor is that when you're up front leading, you are the Christ, especially with Holy Communion, that you take on this figure, this authority that everybody else should follow. Okay, and you know, the whole educational opportunity at that level is you're learning, you know more than everybody else, so when you finally become ordained and have that ranking as a pastor, you have that authority. And I also mentioned in my written blog about a person who told me, you have a special place in life, pastor, and don't let anybody take that away from you. Well, I want to share with you some things that over the, the course of time and in liturgical use or congregational use has kind of spoken of that authority and, and these all have to do with the forgiveness of sins or in that whole time of confession. This one comes from a congregational hymn book back copy written in the 1930s where it says, Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of of their sins. That somehow the pastor, the minister, has the authority given from God to pronounce forgiveness. If you think about it, then is that the only person who can declare forgiveness? In a Methodist hymn book, a little different, um, but still has some of the same, again, back from the late 30s, where it says, Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us to acknowledge and confess our sins before Almighty God with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart. Wherefore, I pray, meaning the pastor, and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice onto the throne of heavenly grace. The pastors being the leader 
Yes, the example, but also if you want to say the one in authority. So you get behind me and I will go to the throne of heavenly grace and get that for you. And out of a Lutheran hymn book, uh, the Lutheran, what is this called here? The Lutheran Book of Worship. This is during the Declaration of Forgiveness. Almighty God has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his, his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Once again, the pastor has been given authority by God to say sins are forgiven. But scripturally, Jesus talks about forgiving the sins of others. Not that Jesus has the power to forgive sins, but telling those who live life, whether it be as disciples or other followers or other in the teaching, to forgive the sins of others. How many times? Seven? Seventy times seven? That forgiveness is part of who we are, not authority. However, that was never discussed so much in seminary and that idea that pastors have pastoral authority to pronounce certain things, to have or grant forgiveness or not to give forgiveness. And as I shared in my last video, even withholding communion from somebody because I decided that person was not living a lifestyle to receive God's grace. And yet, pastoral leadership, not authority, pastoral leadership is about graciousness, in my opinion, especially now after I've lived through decades of doing this, that a shepherd is with the flock. A shepherd leads. A shepherd knows and cares for the varieties of people in the midst. Well, even in, in seminary training and, and beyond that too, this, it, in my particular denominations, that whole idea of communion, that it has to be somebody with authority who declares that in bread and wine or bread and juice or wafers and juice or whatever, that Jesus shows up. You can't just have people running around willy-nilly. So I remember times trying to take vacation, and if it was the first Sunday of the month and it was Communion Sunday, who am I going to find to fill in? because you need somebody with the proper authority to make sure Jesus shows up in the bread and wine. I understand that's a, that there's a bit of kind of cynicism in that, but I believe it, that who gave me the authority to say, okay, if I say these words in the right way and hold my arms in the right position, Jesus shows up and provides grace and forgiveness and fellowship with other people. We're a community, I believe, and that over the course of time is what has struck me. And do I wish I had known this previously? Maybe, but it's been a growth and a development and an understanding of what it is to be the church. And then some people say, well, people aren't coming to church as much as they used to. Maybe they got, if you want to say, kind of, off-put by that authority issue. That somebody who doesn't know them decides if they've been, if you want to say, naughty or nice. If they can be a part of the group or if they can't. And that pastoral authority, to me, isn't authority 
to necessarily say who's right and who's wrong and you better listen to me because I... No. I make suggestions from my education and my training and my experience, which I think are valid. I make suggestions, but those in the midst that I provide pastoral care for, whether it be members or non-members or wherever I'm found in life, they have to make decisions that work for them. Yes, leadership, education, all of that is important, and the training and the experience. Yes, that is important, but it's not authority. I'm in partnership with other people. I am there to help promote and suggest steadfast love, forgiveness, grace, diverse community, because isn't that exactly what Jesus did? And as Christians, isn't that where we find our example? So thank you for indulging me a bit in this retrospective, and it will continue for a couple more uh, video sessions as well, and on my written blog. Yes, I enjoy being a pastor. I've enjoyed it for years, and I've grown in not only my understanding, but hopefully in the opportunity to share grace, compassion, empathy, to suggest what works for me so people can make decisions for their own life. Once again, thank you for watching. You can subscribe to these YouTube videos as you see fit on the little button that's there. But most of all, thank you for being a part of this experience and may you continue to make decisions that are meaningful and faithful in your life.